For you in uh, black cotton soil areas, you know the challenges of building a toilet. You know the challenges of building uh, a septic tank. Yeah, uh, you, it's normal uh, to see uh, toilet pit latrine sinking. It's normal to see a uh, septic tank collapsing um, in black cotton soil area. Um, so today uh, we want to talk about how to construct a pit latrine and this one is the same as also still applies to how to construct a septic tank. For us today we'll be doing a pit latrine but the same method can be applied when you're doing a septic tank especially in a black cotton soil area. So worry no more. Uh, this is Ujenzi today. My name is Orio Victor, a builder with over 20 years experience in the construction industry. I want to share some of this experience with you. Welcome. Before uh, I show you uh, uh, the method and how to do uh, a pit latrine in a cotton soil area, uh, I want to take you through this uh, toilet you are seeing behind me. This is basically a toilet for an institution. It's a nine door toilet that we constructed in a special way. It's a cotton soil area. Um, the challenges that they had, as you can see, uh, those are, you see those are still uh, the previous toilet that were constructed. The challenges that they had was uh, uh, they kept on collapsing, they kept on sinking um, until uh, they found a way of uh, building it. So some are still standing. Uh, this one is a new one and this is uh, according to me uh, and what also the advice that I gave the school management that this is what they need to do. Uh, this is the type of toilet that they need to build. Avoid having so many toilets spread across the school and also um, avoid also uh, the expenditure that comes with building a new toilet every now and then. So I want to take you through this toilet so that you can see uh, how we did it and how it's faring on. And uh, from a distance, you are seeing that heap, we, are, we have another uh, staff uh, toilet that we are building, a four door staff that we are building using the same method that we did when we were building this. So first, let me take you through this uh, uh, toilet and uh, just also just to give you a brief method used to build it. So we have, uh, this is uh, the left side is the side for the boys. Then uh, the right side is the side for the girls. The girls have uh, five doors and the boys have uh, four doors owing to the fact that uh, the boys also have a urinal so uh, it's only fair that we give the girls we give the girls five five doors then we have a ramp that was built uh, for the access because we raised it up here yeah. so we we goes. and also for safety of the kids we used um, terrazzo on the ramp and also on uh, and also on the on the floor we use the terrazzo we use the terrazzo then on the side we had a steel uh, guardrail so that when they are climbing up at least there is some sort of safety uh, on it so this is the side the boys side as you can see uh, the general concept of the building this uh, toilet was to have a low maintenance uh, toilet. That's why you are seeing even the, the walling on the on the on the external uh, uh, was just did the key on the on the finishes of the walls. And then the internal also you realize that there's no paint. Uh, and then the floor we did terrazzo. Terrazzo is long lasting and durable for pa the roof was just a simple steel rafters we then we had our palings on top of it yeah now there is no urino this is the girl's side same concept uh, guardrail on the side terrazzo on the floor then uh, five doors terrazzo on the floor 
on the wall we didn't do uh, any paint work we just did the key yeah. so um, I'm gonna take you around this is how it came out yeah the type of finishing that we did yeah then we applied for three vent pipes yeah see uh, just look at the corner you know the way it was done yeah so this is the back side uh, we also provided big windows I'm sure you've seen almost 90% of the pit latrines all over me I rarely see pit latrines with big with big windows yeah yet you know how uh, they can be smelly especially in a hot area so you see a big and every type of the finishing you know did some nice key on on it and as much as it's a toilet but we gave it our best we just didn't want to build for the sake of building at least we've gotten the opportunity because we have to do um, a staff pit latrine and you're going to use the same concept that we did when you're building this toilet so uh, come and uh, join me as uh, we do uh, our next project as you can see, uh, you're seeing the heap of uh, black cotton cell that uh, has been ex excavated. We brought a backhoe that did a very wonderful job in excavating uh, the work. So let me walk you through and uh, tell you uh, and, and, and teach you how to handle a pit latrine when you're building on a black cotton soil area. Welcome. For those of you who are uh, living in black cotton soil areas, uh, you know the challenges of uh, building a septic tank. Um, you guys know the challenges of uh, uh, draining uh, the house waste to the uh, septic. Because um, the challenge is uh, normally during rainy season, uh, even if you built, uh, you, you built your septic tank, most of the time you have um, the walls of uh, uh, the walls of the septic tank collapsing. And sometimes even for those who've done pit latrine also, you find that normally uh, they normally collapse uh, because of the expansion and contraction of, uh, of, 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 uh, of the black cotton soil around. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, as I told you, uh, you've seen what we've done on the other pit latrine. So this one here we are doing for the staff of the school. Yeah. So at least I wanted you to see uh, and understand the how it's done the engineering bit of it uh the concept is just not to allow this wall to collapse even when it's raining or whatever uh, and also also we've not also concreted the floor so to allow also water to be seeping down you know uh, so that's why we are calling it a pit latrine it's a pit latrine but we built it we built it on the wall so that it doesn't collapse and it's able to hold uh the actual toilet the, the structure above it you know but the way it drains water is just you know the normal way the, the way the pit latrine drains but at the right time when it's full of course uh, the school always brings an exhauster to come and remove it remove the waste and they go and dispose it in the uh, county sewage area yeah so um it's basically a pit latrine but it's a built one but even if you are to do a septic tank in a black cotton soil area this is how you should do it so that it's able to survive and withstand the pressure from the uh, surrounding uh, soil yeah so just to take you through yeah so this one um we did a base uh we did a base of uh of uh, uh, a base of concrete that's a base of 1.2 by 1.2 yeah um you can only see a part of it but uh, it's a base of 1.2 by 1.2 and then um uh, above the base here here there's a ground beam yeah the ground beam that is going around the entire structure as uh, you can see also from the from the video uh when we are constructing so basically the beam it's also just to help in uh, holding the structure at the base, holding it together with, in conjunction with the columns that we have here. Yeah. So the beam is a uh, is a 450 by 200 beam with six uh, D12, two bottom, two in the middle, and two above. Yeah. 
then the beam reaches somewhere here. Then we've come and used masonry walls. We've used up we've used a quarry stones of nine inch. Yeah. So we've built uh, four courses up to somewhere here. Yeah. Then after building the four courses, we came again and did another beam of 450 by 200. So the beam also goes all the way around the, the entire pit latrine. Yeah. This also just to help with uh, reinforcing the mid surface of the ground of, of, of the wall. Yeah. Then we, we did again four inch. We, we did another four courses, and then also here. Above there, we are going to have it. the slab is a normal slab. So the slab is going to have a beam also of a steel 450 by 200. Then, of course, together with the slab. So we end up having, we have columns at the corners, all the corners. Then we have, a, we have like three beams. We have one at, the, one at the bottom, one in the middle, and we have one at the top. Then again, after that, what we did, we came again and used uh, uh, BRC A98, yeah? Because, uh, you know, the reason why we are using a lot of reinforcement uh, is basically because, you know, the steel is good in, in, in tensile uh, strength, you know? So anything that tries to, to pull uh, the, the stone or, or try to pull the wall apart, those beams are going to, the, the reinforcement in the beam is going to hold them together but because we have a beam in between here we have a wall uh, a masonry wall we decide that also we are going to, are going to put uh, a brc mesh of a98 so the brc mesh also was covered on the entire wall yeah all the way then we fasten it on the reinforcement of the beams and the column yeah then rather that we took a mix of uh, cement sand and uh, a quarter inch ballast so we did it kind of like a mortar then we use it now to cover the, the, the BRC mesh. So what you're seeing here is like a, it's just a, a, it's like a, a light concrete mix of a quarter inch ballast, cement and sand mixed together with a good ratio. Then after placing the BRC, then we covered it with this. The reason why we are covering it also, it's, it's always good to cover the reinforcement so that you know, they are not corroded and also not affected by the external weather. So once we've done that, so basically here we are done. You know, so uh, after that, we are just going to build, uh, going to do the slab, then do the wall above. Then we now don't expect this pit latrine to collapse. We expect it to hold any forces that will be coming up or on the side. And we, the only thing that now the school administration will be doing is when it, once it's full, then they just bring the exhauster. And they come and pull the waste and then just go and dump it in the county uh, sewage area. So that's how you should do it. Even if you're doing a septic, this is how you should do it. Because as we've said, the problem with septic, problem with the septic and people are training black cotton soil area is normally they collapse. Because when you don't build them well, when you don't factor in the fact that a black cotton soil has a, a, a very funny habit of expanding when it's wet and contracting when it's dry. So that is the reason why you find that most of the structures, uh, if they're not reinforced well with the steel, they crack because uh, the, the expansion of the cotton soil, uh, the, the stone alone cannot resist the force that comes from the external uh, expansion of the soil. So when you do like this, then you are sure that your septic tank or your pit latrine is going to last long. And then also, uh, you know, uh, another point that I'm also forgetting, the reason also why people in black cotton soil area suffer with their waste from the house is because you build a septic tank, then you go and build also a sock pit tank. Because we, normally you do a septic and then you have a sock pit. So sock pit is just a big hole that you dig, then you put in, uh, you put in the stones. Yeah. So normally you expect that the water from here, if it's a normal septic tank, it will drain into the sock pit. Then from the sock pit, it will go down. But during raining season, when it's raining and this place is waterlogged, that sock pit normally is also waterlogged. So the water that you that would normally comes from uh, from the septic that's supposed to drain there can't drain because really that area is waterlogged. But when you build a septic like this, a pit without really necessarily uh, concreting the ground, then the water will be seeping slowly, slowly. 
to the ground and even when it's waterlogged we really don't expect a lot of um, uh, competition between the water outside and the water inside so you still have your um, your structure safe uh, of course water may rise but it may not be an issue for you in the sense that the septic will still work for you during rainy seasons and during dry seasons so that's how you do it uh, please uh, reach out uh, comment and share let's hear your thoughts in the comment section about what I've just said and also uh, if you have any query any question please feel, feel free to ask this is Ujezi today um, thank you for watching thank you for being with us please like and subscribe and hit the notification button thank you Thanks.